Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines here. We've got to break up some FUD on XRP and the Palau stablecoin. We're going to do it for you get out of here today. And BRICS, the death of the petrodollar, continues. We've got more for you. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everyone. You can follow us on Twitter and YouTube for exclusive content. Right now, $1.08 trillion market cap. The market is up 0.7%. Bitcoin, 25900 plus at the moment. 1632 and change for Ethereum. Tether market cap, $82.9 billion plus. XRP is up to $0.50 cents from $0.49 cents just a few hours ago. We see the market right now up 0.4% on the 24 hours, still off by one2 Ladies and gentlemen, if you have not done it, you can get some of the best precious metals and prices from Miles Franklin physical gold in your hand buy it and own it if you call the number underneath of this video and tell them the code is dig gold dig gold I tell you I just got a one ounce uh, buffalo gold coin and it is amazing I will put something online so you can see that on Twitter so you can see that it is absolutely beautiful and it came very quickly and I want to tell you I'm about to get some silver too next that I'm really really excited about so many great deals if you go right now the one ounce American gold eagle is really got a great deal right now and I tell you some of this Valcambi kilo silver bars are really priced amazing right now as well don't miss the opportunity call the number dig gold make sure you check them out let's start right here it's breaking saudi arabia as we reported the other day extends its 1 million barrels of day of oil production cut until december well we have to wonder if that's timely because they're supposed to join BRICS in january so are they looking to do the old stick it to you right before they join BRICS by uh cutting the production and raising oil prices now i want you to listen to this clip here peter st Ange here uh talk about what the situation is right now between japan and china are selling u.s treasuries hand over fist to save their crashing currencies everybody is connected in this global world ladies and gentlemen it's important we understand the implications of that now take a listen here the main asian currencies the japanese yen and chinese yuan are both plunging which could knock out the world's two biggest customers for America's federal debt. What's driving the plunge is that markets now expect the Fed to keep rates higher for longer, since it's taking them longer to strangle the U.S. economy than they had anticipated. The problem is both China and Japan have much lower interest rates, which drains money out of them to the U.S., to earn higher returns. In China, rates are at three and a quarter, so that's about two points lower in the US. In Japan, they're actually minus 0.1%, so you would have to be a masochist. Why so low? Because they didn't have double digit inflation, so their central banks aren't trying to kill them. If that money can earn a lot more in the US at five and a quarter than it can in China, or God forbid Japan, it floods out, selling the local confetti and buying dollars at which point those governments swing into action, selling their U.S. debt to soak up their worthless currencies. A few days ago, Japan's top foreign exchange official, Masato Kanda, issued yet another desperate plea against the rapid decline in the yen after it fell nearly 7% in the last two months, bringing its total fall to nearly 40% since the pandemic. This is Japanese yen, is not the Argentine peso. The Chinese yuan is not much better. A 10% fall since May has brought it near 15-year lows, prompting China to order private banks to sell their dollar assets and buy up the yuan. Now, normally both Japan and China try to keep their currencies weak so their exports stay cheap. They do that by hoarding U.S. dollars in the government. That means fewer dollars chasing yuan, which means a cheap yuan, presto, cheap exports. Those hoarded dollars are invested primarily in federal U.S. debt. That means both the yuan and the Japanese yen are perennially undervalued. The Economist magazine keeps track of this, and they estimate the yuan is undervalued by about 40 percent 
and the yen by closer to 50%. So that's actually a problem because it's too cheap, because imports get expensive if your currency is worthless. So Japan, for example, imports close to 100% of its gasoline. If gas is selling for $4 a gallon in the rest of the world and the yen's at 100, with taxes, that's about 500 yen per gallon. But if the yen goes to 150, that jumps with taxes to about 750 yen per gallon. So that's 50%. Keep in mind, wages in Japan are about half those in the US, so that feels more like $10 gas. Of course, it gets worse when oil prices are rising. They're up 30% since June. That makes for a near doubling, which is a shock to the Japanese public, who then demand a stronger yen. So what is next? US data is telling the Fed to keep it up. China is actually cutting rates to fight off a financial collapse. And Japan has got miles to go before five and a quarter. So expect more investors fleeing both China and Japan, delaying the fallout of de-dollarization, but also draining treasury of its two best customers, China and Japan. And that could push the Fed to stop its quantitative tightening policy of selling U.S. debt to fight inflation, instead returning it to those halcyon pandemic days, buying treasuries hand over fist, and driving inflation back towards double digits. Okay. There you have it. And basically what we're seeing here, Chad's got it right. It's getting spicy. Selling billions in treasuries to fight off inflation and your two biggest customers won't be buying. Hyperinflation in the U.S. is becoming a very real scenario. That's what was explained right there. You can't really, I mean, that's, that's it. Now, let's take a look at this. Because India now, we were talking about China and Japan, and now we're talking about India buying oil from Russia. Take a listen. Ahead of the G20 summit and U.S. President Joe Biden's visit to India, America's National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications, John Kirby, has said that the U.S. can't stop India from buying Russian oil. Kirby said every sovereign country, including India, has the right to buy oil or lubricants from any other country. These remarks came upon the inquiry being asked whether India buying oil from Russia could be on the agenda of President Biden's discussion with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi during bilateral talks on Friday. Responding to that question, Kirby said that the U.S. has encouraged all nations to purchase oil in accordance with the price cap, but does not believe that this is a time for business with Vladimir Putin and Russia. He further added that every nation has to make their own sovereign decisions. Yeah, notice there's nothing said at all about the fact, well, there's a petrodollar agreement and you're supposed to be buying in dollars, right? The death of the petrodollar is unfolding before our eyes. Former OCC Brian Brooks said himself that the U.S. dollar dominance has slipped to 58% from 73% just 20 years ago, and a rapid cliff is approaching. And as you can tell, my typing is atrocious. But I believe technology can help alleviate the spillover shocks from this unwinding of the petrodollar. And I believe the XRP ledger is a bridge asset or the XRP token and XRP ledger as a bridge asset can help to solve this problem. Don't believe it. It's still true. And more evidence of change is going to come is this right here. Investors have shifted to gold by the most since 2012. And this is also driven by central bank purchases with overall implied allocations from non-bank investors at the highest level since then. So look, again, I'm stacking my pennies next to their dollars. That's why I'm doing Miles Franklin physical gold. That's why I'm also doing glint, right? This is what I'm doing. I'm doing glint so I can spend gold like money and be my own personal alternative to banking. I'm buying physical gold to hedge what's coming. This is the way to prepare for me. It's not financial advice. I'm sharing my digital perspectives and my approach. When I see central banks hoarding gold, then I'm going to do the same. When I see that there could be trouble with bail-ins around the country, I am, or the world itself, I'm looking to create my own personal alternative using Glint. Why am I holding XRP? Because I think the new financial system is going to have XRP and the XRP ledger smack dab in the middle of it. Absolutely, I do. And here we see Irish Central Bank makes first reserve gold purchase since 2009. Several European central banks now increasing gold reserves by tenfold. 
This is what we see coming, ladies and gentlemen. And here we see, as a reminder, we covered this yesterday or the day before, one of China's four biggest state banks owned and op uh, uh, opened its first branch in Saudi Arabia. This is to deepen the relationship in the BRICS coalition to come with Saudi Arabia joining and to expand the use of yuan in that region, strengthening their dollar over the U.S. dollar. Gutierrez, the United Nations chief, says global financial system is fragmented. If we go into this, the real risk of fragmentation of a great fracture in the world economic and financial systems. This is from the United Nations here. Diverging strategies on technology and artificial intelligence and conflicting security frameworks, he said. He called for a mechanism to provide relief to debt-strapped developing economies, include payment suspensions, longer lending terms, and lower interest rates. That, look, including payment suspensions is just short of a reset, right? Now, we've talked about this in the past, but the situation around the globe is getting worse and worse and worse. Will we see a reset or will we just see a shift in the financial system without a complete reset? I don't believe that it's possible myself. But you know what? What do I know? He also supported for rechanneling the additional $100 billion of the IMF special drawing rights through multilateral development banks to increase liquidity and support in developing economies and their needs. Here's another clip right here, and I'm going to play this very quickly about the BRICS expansion could threaten the U.S. dollar. Don't believe it. It's still true. Then it is itself the big thing. And it, again, it's going, these, these, particularly China, Russia, others like Iran that are joining uh, the BRICS, to some extent other smaller countries like Argentina, that want to contest the U.S.-led order. And that actually it's going beyond, again, the photo ops. I, I mean, the dollar is part of it, but I think what you're seeing is a reordering of a lot of economic flows. For instance, since the outbreak of the war in Ukraine, the Russians selling to the Chinese, you know, a lot of natural resources, the Chinese reordering, uh, trying to sanction proof and diminish their reliance uh, on Western controlled natural resources and markets and so forth. So I think what we're seeing is a shifting of the international economic order, and that's motivated in their part by the fact that they do think that they, they are in, I mean, I don't want to exaggerate too much, but to some extent, a death struggle with the West. And so I think that's something we should really understand what's going on is, of course, the Russians believe they're in a war with the West, but even more formidably, the, the Chinese, 10 times the size of the Russians, they also appear to think that they're locked in a, in a, in a essentially an existential yeah, and an existential battle is what they're in. And it is a monetary battle. It is a monetary war. And it has been for multiple years through su supply and trade, right? And now we're getting to the heart of it because of oil and oil production. And we have to keep all eyes on oil. We have to keep eyes on who is joining BRICS and why and what the implications of it will be going forward. Know this. 21 countries officially to agree to ditch the U.S. dollar in 2023. We covered this, but this is just a highlight here that the Asian group consists of 10 countries and the BRICS alliance is now an 11-member group. Inclusion, a total of 21 countries, have officially agreed to ditch the U.S. dollar for global trade in 2023 to know what could happen to the U.S. dollar if BRICS, the Asians, stop using the USD for trade. That whole group of the Asian region there really is made up of Brunei, Cambodia, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Myanmar, Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, Vietnam. And then you can also go to the BRICS alliances as well, which Saudi Arabia is listed knowing they're going to join. Now, the interesting part of this is not only India moving away as well from the U.S. dollar, but also being the president of the G20 this year. And they are looking to bring on actual crypto regulations. And I hope that they do. But before we get out of here, we got to smash this FUD right here. And there's no one better to do it than the gentleman right here from Palau who was a part of that project. 
He says, absolutely, this is not correct. And if you want to look here, we'll just open it up in another tab very quickly here. This article came out, Republic of Palau freezes Ripple-based stablecoin on Friday. And here's why. And then it was a whole article about it was the unknown, it was bad, and whatever. And Palau says, uh, not accurate. Shout out to Jay Hunter Anson for this. Palau is absolutely looking forward to continuing our partnership with Ripple using the XRP ledger to refine our stablecoin solution design. The Palau stable coin was always temporary research and development pilot originally scheduled for 60 days we've actually intend extended it another 30 days to test some additional use cases discovered along the way and allow more people to participate due to popular demand we then need time to compile data and complete our report to government leadership the report will include recommendations for the next pilot and also requirements for full production program. Now, how about that? I mean, that, that right there just tells me that we got good things coming to all of us. We just need to hang in there and wait for the data and everything to unfold. That, not financial advice from me or anyone else. It's just my digital perspectives. Happy Friday. Make sure you check out all the links underneath the video. Great, incredible products and services I use each and every day, and I want you to have access to them too. So make sure you check them all out. I'll catch all of you on the next one.